Welcome to the mini lesson on cardiac muscle tissue. In this lesson we will discuss the structure and function of cardiac muscle tissue. Remember that structure and function are themes in the course. Some aspects of cardiac muscle tissue are similar to skeletal muscle and some aspects are different. The aspects of cardiac muscle tissue that are different from skeletal muscle are well matched to the functions that cardiac muscle tissue will perform. Remember cardiac muscle tissue is found only in the heart wall. It may be confusing to think about the muscle that is found in the wall of blood vessels as cardiac muscle tissue as well because it's part of the cardiovascular system. However, this muscle is smooth muscle, that is the muscle in the walls of blood vessels, and only the heart wall contains cardiac muscle tissue. The picture on the left displays a micrograph, which is a picture taken through a microscope, of actual cardiac muscle tissue. And then to the left of that is a drawing, uh, which is perhaps somewhat less accurate, but because it's a drawing, it's able to highlight the details of the specific structures of cardiac muscle tissue in a slightly more clear way than the actual photograph. One of the things that you'll notice about the structure of cardiac muscle tissue is that like skeletal muscle tissue, it is striated. If you look at the micrograph and also the drawing, you will see that the muscle cells have a striped appearance. And that is what we refer to as uh, striations. The striations are due to a regular arrangement of protein filaments within the cardiac muscle cell, just like the striations in a skeletal muscle cell are due to a regular arrangement of protein filaments. One characteristic of cardiac muscle tissue structure that you may notice from the drawing and the picture that is different from skeletal muscle tissue is that cardiac muscle cells branch. This particular aspect of the structure of cardiac muscle tissue is related to its function because the branches allow for the spread of the electrical stimuli that are going to cause muscle contraction. Because of the branching pattern, these electrical stimuli can spread throughout the heart wall very quickly. Another aspect of cardiac muscle tissue that you will notice that is different from skeletal muscle tissue is the presence of structures known as intercalated discs. In the diagram you will see both in the picture and the drawing lines that are running in the same direction as the striations but darker. Those are not striations, they are in fact intercalated discs. Intercalated discs are uh, very different from a striation in the sense that they are not due to a regular arrangement of protein filaments, but they are actually the place where two cardiac muscle cells meet and join. They are specialized membrane junctions between adjacent cardiac muscle cells. These intercalated discs contain two structures that will be very important for the functioning of cardiac muscle tissue. The first of these structures are desmosomes. Desmosomes are a specialized membrane junction between two cells that hold the two cells tightly together. Proteins extend from uh, one cell to the other and are embedded in both cell membranes such that the two cells are held physically tighter together. The reason this is important in cardiac muscle tissue is that when each individual cardiac muscle cell contracts, that force is transmitted to adjacent cells to which is attached. In that manner, the contracting cardiac muscle cells can cause a contraction of the heart wall itself rather than having the muscle cells pull apart. The other structure in intercalated discs that is very important to the functioning of the cardiac muscle tissue are structures known as gap junctions. Gap junctions are formed by proteins that span the gap between two cells and are actually function as a tunnel that allows ions uh, to pass from one cell to the next. 
The reason this is important is that the flow of ions is an electrical signal and that electrical signal is in fact the stimulus for the muscle to contract. The existence of gap junctions in intercalated discs between adjacent cardiac muscle cells allows for the stimulus for contraction to spread very quickly throughout the heart wall so that the heart will contract in a very coordinated fashion. Cardiac muscle tissue is very closely related to the function of the heart itself. The heart is the pump of the cardiovascular system. The heart supplies the force that will push the blood through the blood vessels. Cardiac muscle tissue is found only in the heart wall. The heart wall is the only place in the body where cardiac muscle tissue is present. In terms of function, one difference between cardiac muscle tissue and skeletal muscle tissue is that unlike skeletal muscle tissue which contracts when it receives a stimulus from the nervous system cardiac muscle tissue is involuntary. Involuntary means that it requires no external stimulus and is not under conscious control. Cardiac muscle tissue is specifically referred to as myogenic because the stimulus for muscle contraction originates within the muscle itself. This stimulus is going to spread through the heart wall in a very specific path so that the heart contracts in a very coordinated fashion allowing it to function as a pump. The route of the electrical stimulus through the heart wall is referred to as the cardiac conduction system. The stimulus originates in a structure on the heart wall known as the sinoatrial node. The sinoatrial node is sometimes referred to as the SA node, with SA of course being the abbreviation for sinoatrial. As I said in the previous slide, the stimulus for muscle contraction originates within the muscle itself for cardiac muscle tissue. The way that the stimulus originates in the sinoatrial node is that the cells that form the sinoatrial node have membranes that are slightly permeable to calcium. Because the membranes are slightly permeable to calcium, the calcium gradually leaks into the cells of the node. Because the inside of the cell is negatively charged, calcium leaking into the node will cause the charge to become less negative and even possibly positive. When that happens, an action potential forms within the sinoatrial node. This action potential is very similar to an action potential that may be seen in a nervous tissue cell, a neuron, and it's going to spread through those gap junctions throughout the muscle wall. The path that this stimulus takes is very specific. It will first spread to the atria causing them to contract while the ventricles relax. The reason that's important is that the contraction of the atria will push the blood into the ventricles. The ventricles must be relaxed in order for the blood to enter. Once the ventricles are full of blood, the stimulus for muscle contraction will flow down the wall that separates the two ventricles that is known as the interventricular septum and the stimulus for muscle contraction will begin from the bottom of the heart so that those ventricles contract and force the blood up and out of the heart into the blood vessels. This specific path of stimulus through the heart wall allows for the heart to contract in a very coordinated fashion and to function as a pump.